today we're talking about motor vehicle accidents and compulsory third-party insurance claims. So if you've had a car accident recently and you think you might be entitled to some compensation, we're going to answer your questions throughout this episode. And joining me to help me with that is uh, Sarah Vinyl and Suzanne Pinion. Thanks for your time. Hi, now, you're both uh, personal injury lawyers with Anderson Solicitors, so you know this topic very well. Uh, Sarah, I'm going to start with you with a broad question. When should people consider making a claim for compensation? So if you've been involved in a motor vehicle accident and you've suffered injuries, it doesn't just have to be a a car versus car accident, a rear end collision. Um, It can also include if you're crossing the road and you get hit by a car, um, if there's a bus involved, a truck, all those sorts of things are um, covered. So unpleasant situations that no one wants to find themselves in, but unfortunately people do all of the time. Um, And it can be daunting that first process, can't it? Going through and working out exactly how they go and make a claim for compensation. Where should people start? Well, Ben, yes, it can be. And most uh, most people will be in shock after an accident. Um, I personally was involved in a rear end collision involving, um, I was in a taxi and um, the taxi driver following the accident was quite, upset and I was so busy making sure that he was okay that I didn't even get those basic the basic details that you need to get after an accident and most importantly that's the registration number of the vehicle involved in the accident the registration number will allow you to identify the relevant compulsory third party insurer for that at fault um, vehicle and um, you need to if you can't if you're injured and you're taken to hospital for instance um, and you don't have an opportunity to get the registration number you'll need to obtain a copy of the police report that would have been made at the time of the accident and get that information that way you need to fill out a claim form Uh, it's a CTP claim form that you can get from the CTP regulator or you can go online and input the registration details, find out who the insurer is, download the form. It requires um, details of the accident and also requires you to have a certificate completed by your GP. So that's the other important thing that you you must do after an accident is attend on your GP and get assessed uh, for your injuries and make sure all of your injuries are recorded um, so you can get the treatment that you need for those injuries. You also need to um, keep a record of out-of-pocket expenses, any witnesses to the accident. Sometimes there's a dispute over who's liable for the accident, so it's really important that you obtain all of those details. There is a six-month, um, it's not really a time limit, that the insurance company likes you to lodge the claim form within six months, but there is a strict three-year time limit for personal injury claims in South Australia. So if the matter has not resolved prior to the anniversary of the three years from the accident, you'll need to have issued proceedings in court to protect your entitlements. And in terms of entitlements, what kind of things can people claim for? So there's uh, pain and suffering and loss of enjoyment of life, uh, past and loss of uh, past and future loss. Um, with respect to your ability to work, and that includes superannuation um, losses as well. Past and future care, which can include voluntary or gratuitous care provided by your family. Past and future treatment, medication, travel, those sorts of things. So it's a complex process. It is one that you can try and attempt yourself, but obviously your advice, Sarah, is that people should engage a lawyer and get professional advice. Yeah, absolutely. It's a complex system. And there's so many uh, different areas um, that can impact a person. So there might be a problem with the circumstances of the accident. It might not be clear who's at fault. A lawyer can help identify any issues in that regard and help you with the investigations. Also, the uh, lawyer will ensure that all your injuries are properly assessed Um, and can help out when there's some complications. You know, you might have had a previous injury to the same body part. An injury may may take a little while to show up. Um, So a lawyer is going to be able to get the necessary medical reports and just make sure that your claim is fully investigated and its impact um, on you is known. So people watching this might be thinking, well, of course I would like a lawyer, but they're very expensive um, and I I can't afford that. What do you you say to those people? 
Well, um, Ben, we offer um, a 30-minute first free, no obligation interview. So that's an opportunity for everyone to, who's been in an accident to get some free advice about what their entitlements might be and to discuss the likely costs to be incurred and make an informed decision about whether they want a lawyer involved. If it's not financially viable to have a lawyer involved, we'll be honest honest about that. In most cases, it is because we also offer a deferred payment arrangement. So our fees don't actually get paid until the conclusion of your claim. Some of your fees will be met by the insurance company and most of the out-of-pocket expenses should be met by the insurance company uh, along the way. So people really don't have anything to lose by going to see a lawyer for that first free interview. Uh, we're not going to hound you if you decide you know, that you don't want a lawyer involved at that stage. You might decide to engage a lawyer a, a bit later down the track when the when your injuries are stable and offers are, offers are being made. Um, but it, it is important, I think, to obtain initial advice early so that you understand the complexity of your particular circumstances and the lawyer can explain whether there's any um, issues over who was at fault or complexity around your claim for damages. If there's a really complex claim for economic loss, for instance, someone had their own business, can't work in their business anymore, you know, a lot of those things take a while to investigate. So the earlier you do it, the better. The other thing you need to um, remember is that um, is the time limit. If if you come really late to see a lawyer um, before that, just before the three year time limit is about to run out, it can be very difficult um, to fully advise a client um, about the matter before there's a need to issue proceedings. And lawyers will also help with compensation offers. So the insurance company will come to the person with that first offer and quite often that can be a low ball offer, can't it? Yeah, absolutely. So it's important to remember that just because the insurance company makes an offer, you're not obliged to accept it. Um, and I would recommend it, anybody that doesn't already have a lawyer involved to contact a lawyer. Once you settle your claim, that's it. So if it turns out a year down the track that you're still having problems and that you can't, you know, once it's settled, you, you can't go back on the settlement. So before accepting any offer, you really need to make sure that all your injuries have been assessed um, and that the impact of the accident on you for the future has also um, been properly assessed um, and a lawyer is going to be able to um, help you with that. They'll make sure that you've seen uh, the correct doctors um, and they'll ask the doctors those questions about your, you know, how you're going to be impacted on in the future, whether you've got a need for, uh, you know, cleaning or gardening assistance, whether your earning potential in the future is going to be impacted that sort of thing. Normally, uh, there's a few offers that go back and forth, um, so it's quite rare to to e for the first offer to be acceptable. But eventually, you'll get there. It's important to make sure that you, you just stick to that process. Absolutely. So there's a lot to think about there for someone who may have been in a car accident, um, and you know, for, right from that first moment that they've had the crash through until accepting the offer. So for, for those people who might be in that situation, Suzanne, what do you say to them? What are the key takeaways from from this episode? So the key takeaways are to um, make sure you obtain all of the information at the time of the accident, the registration, etc. Lodge your claim form, but importantly, go and see a lawyer early. It's it's it's, um, you've got nothing to lose um, and you'll be able to inform yourself about what your entitlements are, what the process involves and then make a decision from there and, and then there won't be, you won't be having to worry about time limits or having to do, do make decisions in a hurry or yeah, just educate yourself. Okay, Suzanne Pinion and Sarah Vinyl, thanks very much for all of your insights. Thanks, Ben. Thanks. Well, that wraps up this episode of Law Talk. If you want any information about anything we've discussed in this episode or to book a free 30-minute consultation with a personal injury lawyer, you can contact Anderson Solicitors at andersons.com.au.
The information, opinions and advice in this podcast are for general information only and not intended to be legal advice. Each claim for compensation is dependent on the facts of the specific claim and you should seek advice about your specific circumstances.